Hello, everyone. Welcome to Solo Arts Heal tonight. I'm Stephanie Wiseman, Artistic Director and Founder of The Marsh and Marsh Stream. And so glad to see, I can see all of you here. Um, I think this is our seventh Solo Arts Heal in the beginning and soon we're, tomorrow we begin our eighth week of The Marsh Stream. I hope everyone is happy and healthy and dealing with it all. It's a tough, tough time. And we're so glad to be able to bring this to you all during this time. Um, let me tell you a little bit about what is happening and coming up at Marsh Stream this week. You're here tonight to see Valerie David. Oh, I cannot wait to see her and see her be interviewed by Gail Shickley um, and her guests. Tomorrow night, we have my Stephanie's Marsh Stream, and I am interviewing Dan Hoyle. Dan Hoyle has done amazing things at the Marsh and around the country and world, a solo performer. I hope you will join me. Um, on Friday, we have fitness and singing at noon, and at night, we have Bingo with Josh Kornbluth, which is turning out to be one of the most crazy, iconic, wild improv bingos in the entire universe, probably. And on Sunday, we are having a catch-up weekend for Marsh Stream. So anything you have missed or want to see, you can see all weekend. You can go to our YouTube channel and look at our previous solo arts heel. We've got incredible shows there and my Marsh Streams and movies and everything. So check it out all weekend. And then we'll be back Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every day at 7.30. And 4 o'clock, we have youth programs. So thank you again. Tonight, for Solo Arts Heal, I want to hand over the mic, whatever you want to call it, to the wonderful Gail Shickley. We are friends. We know each other because I've been going to APAP in New York, and she runs this magnificent room filled with solo performers tenors and other things at APAP and she's an incredible producer and an incredible interviewer for Solo Arts Heal. So Gail, how are you tonight? I'm doing great. I'm great. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, let me make sure, yeah, I'm unmuted. And uh, boy, I hope I can live up to that introduction. That's very kind. Thank you. Um, it's been really wonderful to be a part of a solo arts heal and um and good evening everyone um since stephanie thank you for presenting solo arts heal on marsh stream um this is a vision born from artists inspiring true stories about overcoming adversity surviving mental and physical challenges and becoming their own health advocates advocates for their respective health related issue and many of these artists is as stephanie said have showcased with me at apap which is the world's largest networking forum and marketplace for performing arts professionals um, it's held each january in new york and because stephanie showcased her new show planet do re me about surviving cancer we got to talking about how to effectively create community outreach through presenters and medical institutions to reach audiences that could use real information about and advocacy about a variety of medical issues, but through the arts, delivered with drama and grace and humor, always humor, <laughs> laughter is good medicine. And then when the COVID lockdown went into effect, it was Stephanie who made it happen with Marsh Stream. And we're all grateful for that and to have the opportunity to share these stories and the wisdom they offer to audiences. And, um, and in the talkbacks with audiences, as we'll enjoy tonight, um, especially relevant at this time of the global pandemic. So tonight on Solo Arts Heal, uh, we're so happy to be presenting writer, producer, and actor Valerie David, featuring excerpts from her multi-award winning solo show, The Pink Hulk, One Woman's Journey to Find the Superhero Within followed in conversation and audience talk back with guest Jenny Soldania, who's a patient navigator at New York Presbyterian Hospital and Columbia University Medical Center. Jenny also is a breast cancer survivor and a stand-up comedian, so much looking forward to her joining us after the performance. Um, but let's talk, let me tell you a bit about Valerie before she does her performance. Um, Valerie is the writer and performer of The Pink Hulk, and uh, the one woman's journey to find the superhero within. 
and it chronicles her inspiring journey to become a three-time cancer survivor. She's toured the show domestically and internationally. The Pink Hulk has won several awards, including Audience Choice Award in the Shenandoah Fringe and the Wow Award in Sweden's Gothenburg Fringe. And Valerie and her show has been featured widely across media, including NBC4 New York, AM New York, Cure Magazine, The Indie Star, Breast Friends Cancer Support Radio Network, and Mia's World. And Kristen Morrell, in a recent review in Broadway World, said, quote, her performance is life-changing, the most powerful and poignant two hours I have ever spent in the theater. So Valerie, always with a big heart, wishes to thank everyone involved and asked me to thank everyone involved for her in bringing the Pink Hulk to you this evening. And she's so honored too to be joined um, by Jenny Saldana, whom we'll meet later. But now, ladies and gentlemen, first, please join me in welcoming Valerie David. And first, we're going to see a short trailer of the Pink Hulk, directly followed by her live performance of excerpts from her award-winning play, The Pink Hulk. Hi, it's Valerie. I need to find someone to have sex with. I didn't want this to be just about cancer. It's about fighting back any adversity in life. My lust for life is being fulfilled. I am ready to kick cancer's ass. I feel like this show is honest and it doesn't sugarcoat anything, but I hope it also brings a lot of humor as well. Do you think there's a difference between my two breasts? Can you feel them and check them out for me? You know, you, you have to be honest and it has to be painful. And if it's not painful when you're writing it, then don't bother being a writer. I am as enraged and angry as the Marvel superhero, the Hulk. How the hell? Could this be happening again? I really want to sign up for the 40 miles. Do you think I should? There was someone who had MS who came up to me and she was crying and she's like, I stopped biking when I got MS and I saw your show and I went to bike again. And I pumped my legs even harder climbing up that huge hill. Go, 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 keep going. And I realize how cancer has shaped me both as a person and as a woman. I want to inspire people. We are very much stronger than we think we are. There's a superhero inside of us that we don't realize. The first time I had cancer, my doctor alerted me that my hair would fall out exactly two weeks after the first treatment. And I remember I didn't take it very seriously. I mean, I could be the one person this doesn't happen to, right? So I'm in an elevator with my mom and dad 10 days after the first treatment at a follow-up appointment. And I pull on my hair and it's stuck like glue. And I go, ha, 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 look, this hair, it's staying. Around that two week mark, I get this burning, itching sensation. And the hair, as it falls out, is everywhere. The floor, the bed, the couch. There's even pubic hairs on the toilet seat and my nose hairs begin to disappear. It is disgusting. My sisters and I go to a hair salon to get my head shaved. And as the shampoo guy lathers up my hair, his hands are covered in it. It looks like Chewbacca and Bigfoot exploded on him. Clumps of hair cover his small, delicate hands. I am mortified. My sisters and I just sit in silence crying as the rest of the buzz trimmer buzzes off what's left. But this time, it is on my terms. 
I say goes. I was born on November 13th. And don't let anyone tell you that 13 is unlucky because it's my birthday. So I have a head shaving birthday party after the first treatment. And my salon dramatics host the festivities. And with seven friends in tow, I also have a delicious Oreo cake and a bottle of champagne. Everybody's treated to a swig and a slice. It is joyous now. My beautician puts my shoulder length locks in Daisy Duke-like ponytails and each friend comes up and cuts off a lock while telling me a wish they have for me and then the hair trimmer exalts a mighty war and the rest of the hair falls to the ground and it is triumphant because I say when it goes sexy buzz cut now and I time it just right 48 hours later I get that same burning sensation and my birthday buzz cut begins to disappear within a week one year later I have a birthday party and my friends bring back the locks of hair to celebrate the regrowth on my head. With lymphoma, I was in a weekly cancer support group and I was seeing my therapist, Betty. This time with breast cancer, I didn't feel the need for a support group, but I am missing a significant other. With lymphoma, I had a boyfriend, Gavin, who was there for me when I got diagnosed, but we realized we weren't right for each other and we parted ways. This time, I'm without a boyfriend and it's so hard. The nights are excruciating. I just toss and turn and I just want someone to hold me and tell me, Everything will be all right, Valerie. I have no one to cry to, except my fluffy little bear from high school. This fluffy little bear with no real warmth and no real insides is what I cry into, cradling this bear. And so many times, I didn't think I could make it through the night, but then, the sun rises and I'm surrounded by the love and support of my family and friends in the daytime hours that I am so eternally grateful for. But then night falls again. And luckily I go back to Betty who helps me with that. trying to recover from all this i am determined to do another bike marathon again for the past five years i have participated in the new york city five borough bike tour this year it's may 2nd only two months after i finished my final radiation treatments and i think how could I possibly be ready for a bike marathon in two months' time? I meet my radiologist in her office for the first time. I'd really like to sign up for the 40 miles. Do you think I should? Of course you should. Why not? Definitely. I am grateful for the encouragement. And despite the side effects from the radiation and the fatigue, I try to train as best as I can, even if I can't fulfill the full 40 miles. Fast forward, it's now the day before the bike marathon, and I feel like total crap, total yuck. And for two weeks, I have an inverted maxi pad with wings under my armpit to protect a radiation burn. 
I guess I found one less use for maxi pads now that I'm in menopause. I'm also suffering from post-treatment anxiety and depression. I'm convinced that I'm not going to be able to finish. It's now the day of the bike marathon. At the start line at 8.30 a.m., it begins where the Twin Towers once stood. The bullhorn sounds for it to begin. As I pedal, I hit mile 10, and then I continue to pedal, and I hit mile 20, and I continue to pedal over the Queensboro Bridge, over the Brooklyn Bridge, and I continue to pedal, and then I hit mile 30, and then the colossal Verrazano Bridge, the very last bridge, and I pump my legs even harder climbing up that huge hill. Go, 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 keep going. And as I hit the midpoint, flashbacks of the last eight and a half months flood my mind. Images of my bald head, chemo drips, IV, surgery, radiation, complications, poking, prodding, stabbing, and having cancer a second time in my life. down the last half of the bridge, pedaling faster and faster, wind on my face. I take a sharp right turn and I exit the bridge and I can see the finish line. I can see the end of this. And then I round that last corner, whizzing past the other cyclists with all my might, get the hell out of my way. And as I cross the finish line, ha! I just treatment for breast cancer two months ago just finished treatment two months ago. I did it. I beat you, cancer. I did it. I won. Wow, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Beautiful. Bravo. Bravo. Yeah, no, I think it is. I see horse. Oh, uh, there we go. Valerie, terrific. What a beautiful performance. <laughs> I love your pink. I, I, I know. I, this is the cape I wear in the show. And uh, I've, it's now a wall decoration. And uh, I got it from Kathy Bacon at Rhode Island College when I did it. Um, and uh, I love that cape, and so it, it brings back a lot of great things. And then that's the poster from one of the shows with the logo by Rebecca Collant. And I want to thank you so much, Gail, for having me here, and Stephanie, and the Marsh, and, uh, and Brian, and Brianna, and uh, I'm so honored to be here. And thank you, all of you in Zoom land. <laughs> for coming well, we're to see thrilled. this. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. <laughs> well, we're thrilled. Yeah, and I want to also thank Jenny Saldana for being uh, our guest as well. well. Let's bring her, I want to bring her into the, to the conversation to continue this conversation with you. Um, but first, I do want to remind the audience that posted in the chat is the tip jar. Um, the Marsh receives its funding largely through ticket sales and there are no ticket sales. So we appreciate any support you're able to. <laughs> and also um, posted there are uh, Jenny and uh, Valerie's website um, site. So you can take a look at that. And uh, people also, I wanna ask for audience questions. We'll be taking questions in a little while. Yeah. But um, first let me bring in um, Jenny. Jenny Saldana is a comic actor, writer and breast cancer survivor and advocate. Uh, she has worked tirelessly to walk the way with anyone diagnosed with cancer. She performs comedy all over the country, bringing levity to such a serious subject matter. She's currently featured in the new season of HBO's hit show, 
high maintenance. Jenny is funny and once baked a delicious pie. Welcome, Jenny. <laughs> Yay! I want to have that pie. I'm a joke. <laughs> You know, I, I want to virtually eat it now. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, I understand you have a, um, for all the work you do for women diagnosed with breast cancer, you have a special uh, name, do you? Oh, well, sometimes I'm called a boob whisperer. <laughs> the boob whisperer. Okay. I am also, in Spanish, um, the word madrina means godmother, and I've been a lot of people's cancer madrina. So like their godmother and just helping them go through their cancer. So I'm the cancer madrina. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. And when was your cancer? How long ago was that? I was diagnosed uh, January 4th, 2006. Wow. And um, you've been working since that time as a care, as a advocate? Um, no, no. Um, I, I was, I was corporate. I have that typical story. I was corporate and then I got cancer and then I said, I want to pursue my dreams. And then, and then um, I wrote a play called Pink, the Chronicles of BC Jenny. And I started touring uh, colleges with that. And then, um, and then I was looking for work because I left the corporate world. And after a while, um, I got a job at New York Presbyterian as a patient navigator. Uh, so working with people diagnosed under 40, since I was diagnosed under 40. Um, so, and they wanted someone that was bilingual, diagnosed under 40, and who knew the community. And I'm a Dominican girl from Washington Heights. So, um, yeah, I fit, I, fit, I fit the costume. <laughs> That's great. So, so um, let me ask you both. Um, one, of, one of the goals I think that Valerie has is to debunk the myth that someone with cancer or any type of illness is not able to work, play, or enjoy their life to the fullest. What's been your greatest challenge with this? And in terms of your profession of living and working through three cancer diagnoses, Valerie, what are some resolutions? Yeah, I think, um, I think the hardest part is that, you know, people, there's a stigma, you know, with the word cancer. And in, in fact, cancer has done the opposite with me. It's actually enriched my life. And if it weren't for the pink Hulk, um, I, I've gotten to see relatives I've never met before. I'm, I'm so happy to give people hope and inspiration. And I think that, you know, I was afraid to, to reveal, especially with this third diagnosis, because it was stage four metastatic breast cancer. And I thought, oh, good grief, you know, and this was in 2018. And I was diagnosed the day the show was opening in, in Portland, Oregon. I was actually diagnosed with stage four cancer as I was entering the theater for a tech rehearsal uh, for, to perform that night. Um, so I, I was afraid to say anything. And then you know, um, uh, Cynthia Adler, who was helping me dramaturg the second and third endings of the show, said to me, do you want to keep performing the show? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, well, you need to, to tell this. This is part of the Pink Hulk story now. And I was afraid to, and I'm so glad that I did, because I want to give people hope um, that they can they can survive any adversity in their life. And I want to empower people. And I know Jenny does too, as well, that, you know, the two of us having been cancer survivors, we want to let people know that you can survive anything. You know, if you find that inner superhero with, uh, within yourself to, to conquer that adversity, plus to have a wonderful support system and find that support system, whether that's in family and, or friends, or a counseling group or a one-on-one -on -one therapist. It's important to reach out and get help and know that you're not alone and that we're all here together, especially now in these times. You know, we, we're all bonding together globally to, to, to beat this adversity, right? And we're all finding our superheroes globally to try to, to conquer the fear, the anxiety, if you, you have the virus yourself, it's no different than what a cancer patient and survivor goes through. Absolutely. You know, finding that inner superhero and strength. Yes, yeah. very much like what we're going through now. Um, and there's so much stress involved with the pandemic and uh, you have skills that you learn when you're fighting such um, uh, illnesses, and I think it's very helpful to share those with audiences. Um, you had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and breast cancer twice. Um, um, could, could one of you speak to that uh, about about lymphoma? Is, is that 
about the yeah, lymph itself. The, it, 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 sure. Yeah, thank you. Sure. The, the lymphoma, I had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma stage three, and it was actually a much more serious cancer than, than the breast cancer that I had, um, but it's the most curable of all cancers. So I'm actually cured of lymphoma. And um, with the breast cancer, I have to be monitored for the rest of my life. But right now, I'm happy to say I have no evidence of disease. There's no trace of the cancer with the oral medications that I was on. And and uh, yay! And some of the things, you know, for coping mechanisms that helped me through that was performing. But for everyone out there who's, you know, struggling, it doesn't matter if it's cancer or you're not in a happy relationship or you're trapped in self-isolation. You know, there are things you could do. You know, there's meditation. Um, there are classes virtually online, like improv, um, uh, journaling, uh, talking to your friends and FaceTiming. There's a lot of help out there uh, to cope, cope with that. So the irony is that the um, lymphoma was the more serious cancer, but the breast cancer was harder to go through as a woman because I felt like you know, um, I, I got into early menopause and uh, the children factor is gone. Uh, there's, you know, scars from surgery. So uh, there's a lot of things that that remind me of this cancer where lymphoma, it was, I just had chemo. And with uh, breast cancer, I had chemo, radiation and surgery, and then taking oral medications now that I'll be on for life to keep the cancer at bay and thank God they're working. And I had a hundred percent response to these, to these drugs that I'm on. We're so glad that you did. Uh, and, and the other irony, that, thank sorry? you. And the other irony about the, the things that I wanted to, to say, and I know Jenny will agree with me is that with this, you have to be in tune with your body and you have to ha listen to that inner voice. And with this third cancer, I actually called my doctor and said, I have cancer again. I just know I have cancer again. And she's like, oh, I'm sure you have a pulled muscle because I have these ch chest pains and it turned out to be cancer. And I was right. So it just goes to show you that we all have that intuition and that inner voice in ourselves that we need to pay attention to at all times. Thank you. That's a really important yeah, point to right. make. A lot of us ignore things that we might have. We're too busy. Our lives are so busy. But you, we know our bodies better than anyone, including our doctors, really. We should pay attention to the signs that our bodies give us and see um, and try to get early diagnosis from anything that you're happening. Jenny, could you speak to that? How were your some of your um, coping mechanisms and, and also just on, on advocacy um, for uh, needing to um, kind of be your own advocate during uh, the illnesses? Could you speak to that a bit? Absolutely, because uh, I love what Valerie said, that we have to know our own bodies. And you said the same thing, we have to know our own bodies. I was having symptoms. I was 33 years old. I did not fit the profile. I was, I kept getting told that I was, that there was nothing wrong with me, that I was just being hormonal. Um, and no one would listen to me, but I knew something was wrong. My breast grew a cup size and they were still telling me there was nothing wrong uh, to the point. And, I'll, and I say this every time I get interviewed, because I, I don't care. I always like calling them out. One time I walked in and they said, you can't keep coming in here and, and like using up the resources for, from women who really need them. Like that's what I was told. Wow. So there's a little bit of ageism there, right? Just because I didn't, I was too young. I didn't have the family history. Uh, I don't have the 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 gene. I didn't have anything. So if if I hadn't been that squeaky wheel, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, so definitely, uh, you have to know your body. And you have to be the squeaky wheel when it comes to your health, because in this in this country, being sick is a job. It's a job, mm -hmm. and you don't want to get fired from that job. Um, so we have it so difficult. So, um, advocacy for me started with my play cause I needed to educate, especially being diagnosed so young and, you know, the Latin community, there are even, there are myths about cancer all over, but certain communities have more than others. And I, unfortunately, my community has a lot of myths about cancer and there's a lot of, it's a big taboo and nobody says the word. And nobody wants to talk about it. My, my dad didn't want to tell. I have this joke that I said, oh, my dad at first didn't want to tell anybody about it. But now you, all he does is talk about tattooed areolas at the dinner table. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> you know, at first like, oh, no. And now he's like, yeah, yeah, they tattoo the areola. They do this and that, you know, because I, 
I said, we have to be open. I said, dad, mom, we have to be open. I want you to tell everyone, you know? So uh, it, for me, advocacy was making sure that my community among and, and everyone else, but especially my community knew that first of all, that, that cancer isn't always a death sentence and that it isn't always over 40, right? That was, that's my plight, um, what I call, and I, I tell everyone, and I think that, I, I think Valerie would probably agree on this. Like I tell everyone that I've met in my cancer journey that I got cancer to meet them that very moment. That's why I got cancer. Cause a lot of people, I think a lot of, especially patients at first want to know the why. And some of us will never know the why. There's still not a why what I got cancer at 33. So my why is to meet you today. That's my why. That's why I got cancer. And, um, and, and I'll, I will see, also say this. I think I'm coping uh, better than the average person. I live in Times Square now, first of all. So it's really weird because I'm used to hearing the, the noises. And now I can literally hear the wind howl. Oh, like sure. wind howl through the buildings. And then you hear a siren, you know, which is. Um, so um, I, I think that. And I'm I'm cooped up in a little tiny apartment, but because I was on bed rest, I had what's called a tram. They reconstructed my breast or my stomach tissue. So I was on bed rest for like almost three months. So I'm used to being in my space. I'm used to being home. I have a big TV and a lot of Netflix. So I'm used to, so, but I do what Valerie says. I talk to people on FaceTime. I check in on people. I, I like to, I, I go on, on Facebook live and I, and I do, you know, quarantine karaoke and I, you know, and I entertain my friends. I, that's what I do. I, I, I start singing songs and I'm like, Hey, let's sing eighties TV theme songs today. And, and I go to this party and I'm just there singing facts of life, you know, so anything to keep you. And I, I met somebody recently who said, why do you feel the need to do these things? And I said, the, the key word in your question is need. I'm an artist and I'm cooped up. Yeah. Uh, so of course I'm going to get on any platform that's going to let me jump around and be silly, you sure. know? Oh, and, and you don't have to be an artist to do that. You can just get on, again, I love uh, quarantine karaoke because it's just people, they don't care. It's just singing, I think stupid. And it's just a way to connect. And, Absolutely. You know, you know, COVID also, um, you know, with the shutdown, uh, it, there, there's, it causes obstacles to get checkups and seeing your oncologist or your doctors uh, sometimes. Have there been any problems that you can speak to um, with that? I think, in fact, Valerie, didn't you have to be an advocate during this lockdown for yourself to get some blood tests? Sure, sure. Yes, yes. Um, also, with um, and what I wanted to address with Jenny. Now, Jenny, you were BRCA negative or were you BRCA positive um, BRCA um, with, the, with the breast cancer? BRCA, BRCA negative. negative? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And that's what I just want to bring up as well. I was BRCA negative too. And so we, so Jenny and I both didn't have the BRCA gene, which is an 80% chance of getting cancer if you have the BRCA gene. So when, you know, she mentioned, you know, with the, with why people go, why, why it, it's, it's best not to dwell on the why it's just to best to move forward and say, okay, we, we can't explain what happened with our cancers, but, um, but we're going to go forward and we're going to push through and we're going to fight it. So, um, so I just, I didn't realize that you were BRCA negative as well. And um, so some of the, it's been a little bit tricky with the um, trying to see your doctor during the COVID time. Um, and uh, I had to wait a little while uh, till, till uh, they were seeing patients. And I actually did get to see my oncologist uh, last week in person. And we had our temperatures taken the minute we got into the lobby. They asked us questions. They gave us a mask of their own, even though we came in, I came, everyone has been coming in with a mask, but they gave us a mask. And um, I didn't have a physical exam, but that's probably going to be next time. But I did get um, a bone shot that I'm, I need um, every uh, few months. So I finally got that. And then I'll be seeing him again, my doctor, Dr. Kevin Kalinsky at New York Presbyterian. Um, at, and I'll be seeing him again. And then I'll have my scheduled test. So everything seems to be going back on track. But it, but it was funny because 
when I go to the doctor, my blood pressure, is, I'm always nervous. It's like 150 something over something. And I was so happy to be there. My blood pressure was 127 over 77. Cause I'm like, I want to be there. I, I, I'm calm. And I was really happy to be, at, I, I was like, yay, I'm seeing my cancer doctor. Yay. I couldn't, it was the happiest time I'd ever seen. Cause I, I, I adore that, that hospital. And, uh, and uh, it was really great to, to, to be there. And, and, and I think that's what this, the, some of the anxiety was, is that if you need to see your doctor, things have changed because of COVID. But hopefully things will keep going where you can see your doctor and get the help you need. But I think no matter what happens, you can get the help that you need if it's, if it's something that's very serious or important. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so luckily we could wait on my appointment, but... Um, I was supposed to see him in April, so we got to see each other in May. Terrific. Did you yeah, so meet that... at the hospital, or did you meet in the stand-up community? Oh, we met. You, you, you tell us, Jen. Tell everyone. Uh, because I wait. I have a siren. <laughs> <laughs> New York. Yeah, I have a siren. So, um. We, I use, I, I run this room called the Resource Library that's completely staffed by breast cancer survivor volunteers. I'm the one staff uh, person who, who mans it. And so I was in there, people come in there to talk to us and we, we, you know, we say we're survivors and we talk to the newly diagnosed, we talk to the family, we have educational material. So she came in to get leave, of, leave flyers for her play. And people do that, like, oh, I'm doing this. And I was like, yeah, because it's, it's like a library. So I'm like, okay. I said, of course. And I put them on the table. And then she tells me a little bit about it. And she's like, Kevin Kalinske told me to come talk to you because you do comedy. And um, I said, yeah. And then I didn't get to see it the first time. But then she asked me to be part of the talk back um, when she did it at the 14th Street Y. And so I got to see the play then. I was so excited about it. And then I, I, I helped with the talk back then. And then we've done, and she's asked me to do a couple of other talk backs. So that's how we met. We met yeah. at the hospital, just two little breast curls. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> and I'm so grateful. And thank you, Jenny. You know, it's, just, it's been great. We did an actor's equity in November and, you know, we, we were, we're, we're always teaming up. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Together, so I, I'm grateful to her. Um, and Valerie, you've been performing this show for almost four years now. How has this show evolved in your role as a performer of your own story? Oh, it, it's, it has definitely been a, quite a journey. Um, when I first did the show in 2016, I was a two-time cancer survivor. And, uh, I, and I kept performing and it was, it's been such a wonderful experience. I performed all different places all around the world and in, in, in different venues. Um, I, I did the show in a, a hotel room. Yes, yes, three different endings. So the first ending was when I was a two-time cancer survivor. And then I did, um, then I got diagnosed in Portland, Oregon in 2018. Um, with stage four metastatic breast cancer. And I did a second ending. And I, that's when I introduced that I had cancer again. And it was really uh, emotional. And it was, I was so grateful. I, I decided to debut that new second ending in Virginia Beach, which is where I grew up. So at the end of the show, you know, my last line is, you know, um, but my color is bright pink. And then uh, the lights uh, changed and I started, I put on this cape <laughs> and I told the audience that, um, that I, you know, I donned the cape and I said, you know, I got cancer again and I'm going to fight this and don't you worry, just like I beat the cancers but before I'm going to beat it again. And we all have that superhero within. I said, stay tuned. And I wrapped the uh, cape around and this shoot of smoke came out. It was like, and people were like, because <laughs> I hadn't said anything to anyone. It was like the first time I publicly said that and people were like crying. And I had my family there to, as support and they had flown in and everything. And it was great to have them. And it was just such a wonderful experience. And then I did that second ending in New York um, a week later, uh, two weeks later uh, at the WAM Festival, the Women's History Artist Month at 
with Goddard. And I did the Virginia Beach show at the Z, uh, Ziders American Dream Theater. And thank you for all your support. And the funny thing is when I was telling the second ending, they did a Wizard of Oz thing. And it was like this big pink bubble, like Glenda the Good Witch. It was just, it was such a wonderful experience to do that from premiere it then. Then I premiered that second ending in New York, same thing at the Wham Festival on the 23rd of March. And then on April 1st, uh, uh, seven days later, I had gotten tests and I got the test back uh, to see how the medication had worked. And uh, my doctor at the time uh, said, there's no evidence of disease, Valerie the cancer's gone and I had it in my bones, in my chest, in my rib and uh, uh, abdomen, and there was no trace of the cancer. And then I had to call everyone and I was like, hi, uh, remember that second ending that, that I had cancer again? Well, it's gone. So uh, it was like, I'm like, and so then I had to do a third ending. And so I created this third ending where I talk about how I got, I you know, got cancer, and I called my doctor, I'm like, I have cancer again, and then it turned this right, and, um, and then how the medication works, and then at the end, I, you know, I have, still have the cape on, so I do each of the endings, the original ending, the second ending, where I say I have cancer, and then the third ending, where I go, and you know what, I, I conquered cancer again, and never, ever, ever, ever give up hope, that's the uh, message of the pink hole. That's that's beautiful. Thank you. So you're yeah. so inspiring. And those are the endings. <laughs> wow, that's you great. Go. You know, you, you so, so you told me you were you've been in twenty eight different theater festivals, and I know you won multiple awards. Um, what do you think are the main reasons for uh, why the show has been connecting so strongly with audiences? You told me men and women, even those that haven't experienced cancer. Yes, yes, and, and I will get that. And I first want to thank um, Heather Massey and Sam Simon for having me be part of this because they introduced us. You know, Jenny and I, we met at the hospital and then we met at APAP, and I, I wanted to thank them as well because um, I wouldn't be here meeting you if it weren't for them. Yes, they're in the audience tonight. So to I think the um, it's a great question, like why is the story connecting with so many people, men and women? And I think it's because I've had the two different types of cancers where non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is actually the target group are men in their 40s. So I actually wasn't in the, tar the target group for that cancer. So men can understand as well as the breast cancer um, with women, but as as we know, uh, men also can get breast cancer as, as well. There's a certain percentage of men. So I felt like between the two cancers, I cover both the men and women. Mm -hmm. And no matter what cancer you have, it's all the same boat. And am I right, Jenny? We all go through the same things. And it was interesting because I did the show at the Pittsburgh um, Fringe Festival and shout out to Shayla, uh, who's the fringe director there. And someone in the audience was a testicular cancer survivor. And he contacted me and said that, you know, he, he actually was a reviewer and he wrote in the review that uh, even though I had a different cancer from Valerie, I still related to everything that she went through the fear and the anxiety and what it was like to go through treatment. And I think the other reason why it's connecting with audiences is because of the fact that, um, that uh, it's, it's about living life on your terms. And, and it's about, not just about cancer, but any adversity in life. Uh, I had people who, you know, um, in the clip you saw the someone with MS who said, you know, I couldn't bike again. Um, because I thought I couldn't do it because I had MS and now you've inspired me to bike again. Um, somebody who had, who was uh, HIV positive said to me, I, I really related to your show because, you know, I, I have, we're all struggling right now with, with life and, 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 and surviving. So it's a story about survival of just of anything. I had two friends that said, I'm sick of my job, <laughs> you know, and they quit their jobs because they're like, we see that your life is living on your terms. And that's what I think it's connecting. 
and uh, and the audience has been wonderful. Um, I got a globe. I should have. It's in my room. I should bring it. Uh, bring it out. A giant globe where this um, John gave it to me and said, "This globe is for you because your show should be globally everywhere." And uh -huh. and I got pink sunglasses uh, <laughs> that I wear uh, that someone. Sweden gave me a pair of pink sunglasses because I start the show in Aruba. <laughs> um, and it and I think the show is about a celebration of life. And I think that's what we all need right now, especially now, is we need to celebrate, celebrate those lives. You know, I was watching uh, uh, sh um, New York One this morning and they had, they, they were talking about mental health and the mental health psychiatrist said, just congratulate yourself to get out of bed even. That's an accomplishment, you know, because we're going through this. I'm like, yay, she's right. Just getting out of bed to face the day and face what we're doing in life in this global pandemic, that's in itself is a feat. So we have to celebrate the milestones, no matter how big or small they are, they're milestones. And especially now in, in this thing, you know, uh, I write, I actually started writing and maybe this is something that can help people that it's helped me is every night before I go to bed, I write in my journal what I'm grateful for today. And tonight I'm going to write, I'm grateful that I was here tonight and I'm grateful for the friends and family who've been watching. I saw my, I, 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 I have to use my reading glasses to look at the chat. So I'm going to yeah, do that, but I, I, question here that and I saw my cousin. I want yeah. to you have a question here from the audience that um, maybe Jenny you could answer. Um, do you have any tips for how to be the best support for a person, person for someone going through radiation and chemo for the next year? For absolutely. Uh, but first, I did want to touch up on what Valerie said because as an audience member and a fellow playwright and a and a and a and a, and a survivor, I think the reason that her another reason that she's too modest to say is that it's raw and it's and it's and it's it's raw and it's candid and she's not hiding anything. She's saying, look at all of this, you know, she's not putting on airs. So I think that that really, cause some people will get this and never talk about it again. They go through it, they'll never talk about it again. And that's bravery to come out and do it every day. Like I'm, I'm told that I go to, I go to the scene of the crime every day cause I work at the hospital that treated me. And, not, and there are people who could never do that again. So I, I just wanted to add that to Valerie. And the answer to the question, uh, what's the best friend, uh, the best way you can be there for somebody is be present in the sense that um, people love to tell people who are sick, if you need anything, let me know. That's not the way you do it. You suppose you should check in periodically and say, I have time now. Is there anything you need? Because suppose I need you and I call you. And at that time that I call you, you're not available. You know, so I always tell people, you check in with the patient and say, I'm here today, or even I can do this today, or, you know, do that first. Like, don't ask the patient to reach out to you because we're too busy being sick. Right. So I, I say that. And also, listen, listen, just be present. I mean, one of the things that people are most uncomfortable with is silence. And right. sometimes people need to be in silence. Listen, and also one of the things that, that, that I think is very important, never tell someone you're going to be okay. It's dismissive, and you're dismissing how the person feels, and, and you're actually saying that because you're uncomfortable with it. I like to say, whatever comes, I will walk with you. Ah, very good. Yeah. That's very helpful. Yes, and, I'm, and I wanted to shout out, my sister is watching, um, Pam Stucky in uh, Seattle. And, um, and he was, you know, and, um, and so it, I think to piggyback on what Jenny's saying is she's absolutely right. You know, uh, people say, oh, you're going to be okay. And don't worry, don't be down. Well, you're allowed to be down. You're allowed to be angry. And, and even in this pandemic, we're allowed, you know, I, I was talking to my sister and she's, you know, and I was like, today, I'm just not happy and I'm not going to be happy and I'm just going to stay that way. And I think the other thing that's, you know, and, and then, you know, get over it, but, but you're allowed to feel whatever you feel. And I think the other thing that's really helped me a lot is to, as a patient, and I'm sure Jenny will agree, is to assign people duties, right? I, I remember, you know, I have a, a friend, JC, and I'm like, you know what? I need help with laundry. So she came over and helped me with laundry. Then 
I had someone helping me cook Annie. And then, you know, I had another friend, um, Wendy, who went through all my bills, my hospital bills and organized them into and, and put them into giant book binders. Uh, and I mean, they're giant book binders. And so I think it's important. I, I call it manage. I'm, I, I, I used to be a manager of an editorial department uh, and in charge of, of 14 people. And I feel like this is no different. Um, I've got people to do different things. Can you pick up my medicine? Can you go with me? When I had radiation treatments, um, I had someone go with me almost every night. I had someone go with me and I, and I had a calendar and I sent it, emailed it out and I said, okay, who's gonna sign up for what day? And then I had my sister come for treatment and my other sister come for treatment. So don't be afraid to ask for help and, and don't be afraid. And what Jenny said about my show being raw, you know, there, it is, there are a lot of serious moments in there because I don't sugarcoat what the cancer is. You know, I go through um, what it's like in the radiation room as well. Um, I have a radiation wedge that I use in my show and I take the audience through through going through radiation with me as if they're in the radiation room, even with the lasers. I have a late green lasers that, that crisscross that mimic the real radiation room that I was in, that the, uh, the, that the audience experiences with me. Yeah, so they can get, people can get a real yeah. flavor for what it is and also to be, uh, to know that there is support out there. In fact, we had our show last week on caregiving um, and, uh, are, uh, I, we have a lot of resources there also. Um, there's a lot of resources out there for people on caregiving. Um, and so you need to be your own advocate and it's also helpful to be organized to have other people, other people try to help you. Um, exactly. And then Gail and I, you and I also talked about, um, uh, you know, not being afraid to ask for things, especially um, I had uh, uh, one, one of my bills, I had over $5,000 in out-of-pocket expenses that I had to pay back. And I remember calling the financial uh, aid department at the hospital and I said, look, I have this bill. And they said, well, you could do monthly payments. And I was like, you know what, I can't afford this. And I you know, went through um, a, a process of going through an application, but that bill was pardoned. I didn't have to pay any of it back. So it, it really is a great thing to realize that you can you know, um, ask for things and say, you know what, can we lower this bill or can we pardon this bill? Or what, what can you do in working with the hospital or the doctor to, to help, help uh, with payments, because I know with Jenny and I will totally agree on this, that it's hard enough to be a cancer patient. And then you almost feel punished when you get slapped this giant medical bill. Uh, and you're like, like, you know, I, I'm, I want to, I want my focus to be on treatment and becoming healthy. I don't want to be up at night uh, not knowing that I can't pay my bill. So I think that's really important as well. Yeah, that is important to yeah. know, to ask, that you can ask at least um, and try to work something out for it. in all the aspects. It's important to ask the question. No question is too silly to ask as we learn mm -hmm. from the time we're kids, but we have to be reminded of that sometimes. Um, yeah. So let, let me ask you, because um, the time has been in, in going so so quickly, um, What what's next for you in the pit? Uh, Pink Hulk. What what are your future goals now? Uh, well, now, now um, this is great. This is the first time I've done it virtually. Uh, so I um, I was very exciting and, and very nervous because it's very different. Uh, yes. I feel like it's like <laughs> Wayne's <laughs> world, Wayne's world. It's, like, <laughs> it's in a spare bedroom and, you know, I put up, you know, uh, posters and capes. <laughs> yeah, it's like it is. It's very Wayne's world, but yet it's very intimate. And then you have to adapt it because, you know, I can't do all the crazy. Yeah, 
Yeah, so what's next is I'm very excited. I'm going to be part of the Reykjavik Fringe, the Iceland Fringe that's coming up in July. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to be doing it virtually. I'm not sure just yet. I, I'm about, I might do excerpts and do something similar to this. And also um, Gilda's Club, which is a wonderful resource. Uh, that's, uh, there's so many great resources out there. The American Cancer Society, Cancer Care, uh, Gilda's Club, uh, Cancer Support LA, uh, Breast Friends in Oregon, Pink Ribbon um, Connection in, in, in Indianapolis. There's so many great places. And um, in June, I'm gonna be doing um, a, uh, a workshop with Gilda's Club virtually on Zoom. Uh, I'm gonna be, um, I just finished doing a weekend of Hope at Stowe, Vermont. Uh, so I'm going to be looking for more opportunities uh, to, 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 to do this. I'm also working on a new play uh, called Baggage from Bad Baghdad, and that's going up in October uh, as a reading. We're not sure virtually or if it's going to be live, but I'm working on that as well. But I'm going to keep forward with the Pink Hulk and plan for October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I'm planning things for the summer. I'm teaching improv classes virtually. So there's there's a lot happening. And uh, it, it, I, I, I know like Gail, Gail and I were talking, like I, I have been more busy through this than could possibly tell you. And I was very honored that I had an um, article published in Cure Magazine and also Broadway World about, uh, it's called the um, Three Times Cancer Survivors Inspirational Perspective. Uh, in in the in the coronavirus, I also did a Corona poem rap that I submitted, and that that I just did this past week. And so I'm doing a lot, some more writing as well. And uh, so I, I'm going to keep going with the Pink Hulk, and I'm not letting anything stop me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> glad we're glad. And I know it's like I like the close-ups. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, thank you, fun. and Jenny. And um, I know I want to point out yeah. that there are uh, there are um, some resources that the producing manager has posted in the uh, chat, and these are from the caregiver show that we did previously. But um, also, uh, either of you might put any. Um, Jenny, you mentioned a particular resource. Where is it that you work? Perhaps you could put that in. If you work at New York Cancer Sharon Hospital, where Valley's being treated right now, I'm technically her patient navigator. <laughs> and um, uh, so New York Presbyterian Hospital is a great hospital. And I'm, we do have a, a library called the Resource Library. Right now we're under construction, so it's shut down. And with all this, it's probably going to be closed until the end of the year. Um, but uh, I also, there's an organization called uh, SHARE, S-H-A-R-E, and that's for breast uh, and ovarian cancer. There's also an organization in on the West Coast in, Se in Seattle called the Pink Daisy Project. And if you want to support smaller breast cancer organizations, that's a great one. It's a small organization. The Pink Daisy Project. That's great. And I think we have a Share the Care um, up there on, on the, uh, in no, the, share right the share, I don't know if Share the Care is the same as Share. Oh, okay. Share is different. Okay. Yeah. Share yeah, the it's Care different. might be just for the caregivers. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. And, and I also wanted to say to that if you want to get in touch with me and ask for resources as well, because I, you know, I know we're running out of time, um, you can email me at pinkholkplay at gmail.com and my website is pinkholkplay.com and I'd be happy to, you know, continue the dialogue after this. And I also wanted to thank my fellow solo arts heel cohorts as well who are watching and they've inspired me the past few weeks with their shows and Rhonda told me about uh, these uh, air pods that I, I got and I, I it's been solo arts heel and Stephanie Rhonda has music. been wonderful and I want to thank Brian and Don Reed I saw the YouTube video so if you guys want to find out how to do some Zoom and some Zoom tricks. Don Reed has a YouTube video on the Marsh uh, um, streaming site that was really helpful about, about learning how to use Zoom. 
Absolutely. Yes, yes. And Gail, thank you. Thank you both so much. It's just really great to have you here. And um, this has been a wonderful conversation that's flown by too fast, but I'm, I'm so know. grateful for the resources and your fabulous energy and your good humor. It just art heals and that you you guys really embody that so um i'm very grateful i i um i'm gonna wrap it up with you and and thank you again and i do want to announce um if our their show next week um wednesday next wednesday Mar may 27th um, we're going to have a Martian um, perform, um, Diane Barnes, who's going to perform excerpts from her solo show, My Stroke of Luck, a captivating and inspiring story about forging a new identity after a debilitating stroke. In My Stroke of Luck, Diane Barnes, a physician and single adopted mother of special needs and gifted sons, relates her story and inspirational, it's, it's inspirational as it is poignant. Barnes' solo show is a spellbinding and funny look at love family, seemingly insurmountable obstacles, and the wonder of the human brain. It has appeared at sold-out shows off-Broadway at the United Solo Theater Festival, fringe festivals across the country, the LA Women's Theater Festival, and the Atlantic Black Theater Festival. My Stroke of Luck was extended multiple times at the Marsh, San Francisco, and we are just really honored that she's going to be able to join us next Wednesday. So, um, so with that, I want to thank the audience. Remember the tip jar. And uh, thank you, Jenny. And thank you so much, Valerie, for being with yes. us tonight. And, um, and thank you. And thank you for the marsh. And thank you also, um, the audience out there. And uh, I, I put my glasses on to see everybody <laughs> who's out there. And Jenny, thank you. going to um, come in and join us for, yes. for some closing remarks. Um, so okay. thank you. Uh, Stephanie, you. in there somewhere. I'm here. I'm here. I had to unmute myself. What a wonderful show and discussion. It was incredible. So inspiring. You know, me also having to deal with it. I hear these stories of a different kind. So this was wonderful. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Gail, and everybody that's here right now to, for being part of this. Um, I, you know, the interesting thing about Diane's show next week is Diane is a retired radiologist. So she's a physician who got cancer, or a stroke, a physician who had a stroke, whoops. And it's a quite an interesting point of view of a physician having the stroke and not immediately going to the hospital. Uh -huh. uh, so it's a very wonderful show that I hope you'll all come back for. And I hope you'll come to the Marsh stream. I hope you're all well to give us a tip jar, sign up. You know, it'd be great if you all became YouTube, uh, what do you call it, subscribers. And then you'll know when all these things go out. You'll be able to see these shows after. We have lots of shows that are in our library. So keep checking us out. And uh, Brian, did you want to say something? I did, I was gonna jump in here. I thought you might, I'd never really turned on my video. Um, hi guys, I'm Brian. I'm the producing manager for The Marsh and The Marsh Stream. Um, I just wanted to say, Valerie, um, you had quite a big crowd on YouTube Live tonight um, watching the show. So you had a lot of fans over there. Um, we had one fan, Luke Sokdio. I hopefully, Luke, if you're still watching, I didn't butcher your last name. But he said, I think we've all been touched by cancer during our lives. And when I watched a snippet of your show at my school from start to finish, I felt so connected through the emotion that you convey. So he thanks you very much for your performance tonight. Um, I've also in the YouTube live chat room put your information there so that Luke can reach out to you personally to ask you some questions. Um, with this weekend coming up, um, we are doing a YouTube catch up weekend. Um, like Stephanie said, we've had eight weeks of shows on the Marsh stream. So we have a, a very big library over there. So make sure you do click over to our YouTube channel and catch up on everything Marsh stream this weekend. So, all right, Stephanie, that's it for me. Thanks so much, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you guys. Bravo. Wonderful. 
Everybody Thank stay you. safe and well. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Love you, this Valerie. Love you, too. Hi. 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 I miss Fran. Thank you guys so much. This is great. And um, I did, this is awesome. Um, and is Brian there? Oh, there's Jay. Oh, my gosh. Still here. Uh, this is so awesome. Um, is there a way to get a copy of the chat um, so I could keep the, the comments? Of course, I will make sure that you get that, Miss Valerie. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm like, who's here? Wait, let me get the guys. You feel like it turned on Oh my your... gosh. I have some videos and say hello to Valerie if you'd like. Oh, oh yeah. Thank, thank you, Jay. You. <laughs> I see you have to go. I have Valerie, to I love Jay. you. I, I love you, love you Valerie. Valerie. Really wonderful. Uh, so, uh, get the new yeah. one, the little brown girl. So, if anybody has any questions, just let me know. If anybody wants to talk to me, I'm more than willing to talk to whoever needs to be spoken to. Awesome. Thank, yeah. you. Really? Uh, thank, thank you so, so much. Uh, thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank Hello. you. Hello. Thank 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 you. Or, uh, keep, All right, Valerie. Keep, let's keep see here. We have we can we can chat. take just a few minutes here. Um, oh, sure. If anybody's got anything that they would like to say yeah. to Valerie, wave your hand so that I can see you, and then we can get some any last minute questions or anything anybody wants to say. Valerie, if you have anything that you want to say, sure. Um, I just want to say that hang in there, everyone. We're going to get through this. Um, I know it's 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 been challenging um, with with this, and I know you know it's just been really crazy. But I also you know want to say this is my real hair from my head shaving birthday party um, that I really had, and I I want to thank. There are some people watching tonight who are at that birthday party that I wanted to thank. Um, when I had my head shaved back in uh, 2014, um, and I and they the year later they brought all of the like my, I had all these like um, Daisy Duke ponytails and everyone cut off a lock and they kept it and then they brought it back to the party the next year. So uh, it was really really special and I want to thank people for that uh, and um, and I'm so glad everyone attended tonight. I was really grateful for that. And then did anyone have any questions? I don't know if people are muted or anybody. Let's see here. Uh, I think I've got Myra here. She's trying to people. unmute herself. Do... There you go, Miss Myra. Oh, thank you. Um, Shalom, Valerie. I was in the oh, breast hi. Breast yes, how are you? Yes, um, the, we're doing the interviews. Um, and um, uh, and I enjoyed that very much. I I got here late to this because I was actually in another. I was in a Jewish learning class. <laughs> but the reason I'm I, I wanted to add what. I have the issue of Cure Magazine, the spring issue, and your article is not in it. I don't understand. Oh, it's, it's published online. Oh, yeah, it's, it, it's online. Oh, it's not um, in the actual print magazine. Uh, I mean, it's not, because it just got published, but it, it's online, and I'm gonna, um, I'm putting it in the chat right now for because you. Because I, I um, look Here's the link. I heard about it from breast friend from they mentioned it and I went when I got the issue and I read I looked every page I couldn't find it. Uh, Valerie, Ms. Yeah, Martin, Valerie it just, got just put that in the chat. She and there's a link in the chat room for that article. Thank, thank you. Because I I thought it was gonna be in the yeah, magazine. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, because right now it's online because uh because it just had gotten published so it's it's published online and i also put the broadway world article there as well oh thank you um, thank you, you. I, because it yeah, said it was, it was in the magazine so thank you. you thank you okay oh oh Bye. yeah 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 it's, it's, yeah thank you thank you oh, yeah it's in the chat great 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 Perfect. this is great nice my friend from high school oh my friend from high school uh uh this is 
um, she's on, she's in, in here now. This is really my um, teddy bear from high school that uh, Brigida gave me. And it's called Valby. That's Valerie and Brigida mixed is Valby. So this is actually the, the uh, teddy bear. And I will be honest with you, I am sleeping with it now because I'm by myself at night. Uh, and I'm feeling that same isolation that I had with cancer. And I am sleeping with this teddy bear every single night during COVID. And I am not ashamed to say that. <laughs> and I love this bear. And thank you, Brigida. Uh, it'll, it's, it's been always with me and it always will be with me. It needs a, a little bit. Uh, I well, and As soon as the seam strips open, I'm going to get somebody to, to stitch it up a little bit. So, but it's, it's, it's so a hundred percent whole. So yes. Oh, look, see, we have our stuffed animals. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, and, thank and you so, so much and, uh, for joining us Andy. tonight yeah. on the Marsh stream. Yeah, really you. appreciate it. Um, uh, Stephanie mentioned before, but I'll mention again before we do uh, exit out of here. Um, Please do help us out all that you can. Um, Stephanie would say no donation too small. And of course, no donation is too big. Um, Gail said earlier, um, we are at, we've lost 70% of our income with not being able to have live shows at this moment. Uh, we thoroughly enjoy doing the Marsh stream, keeping the community alive, not only here in the Bay Area, but um, through our Zoom meetings, we are even over internationally. Um, we have a lot of different countries that are tuning in to watch our program. So. Anything that you could do, we really appreciate it. You can even visit our website, themarsh.org. The tip jar is right there in the top right corner. As well, check out everything that we're doing on the Marsh stream. So we appreciate it. We thank you, Stephanie, if you want to say anything to close us out. Thank you, everybody. So glad you're all here. Stay healthy. Stay healthy and in good spirits. Thank you.